Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Welcome to the Monday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. As you're hearing the broadcast, I've just gotten home from Tennessee. Well, hang on a minute. That's Tennessee, Illinois. Uh, There's a town in the state of Illinois called Tennessee, and I had the privilege of preaching there. I've been there a couple of times before. Wonderful people love serving the Lord. They love to hear the Word of God. Great people to minister to and had a good time there with the folk. All right, now my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus, chapter 24. If you can, get your Bible and turn there. We'll be reading the opening four verses of that chapter in a moment. Leviticus, chapter 24. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. I want to encourage you to get some gospel tracts from us here. I'm going to say more about tracts, but this one is a great, great tract for children. It's entitled Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. I'll say something more about the tracts here in just a moment. You probably know that one of the most famous lines out of the first five books of the Bible, at least the line that people often know and heard, is the line from the scripture that says, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. Well, we're going to find that phrase here in Leviticus chapter 24. This is not the only place it's found in the law of Moses, but it is part of the law of Moses. Now, that phrase, frankly, was a statement of God's grace and restraint on people. You see, if somebody hurt you and caused you bodily damage, your human response is to get them back, but get them back a little harder. Well, God's going to limit how much penalty can be exacted when damage is done. Now, what is happening here in Leviticus? 24 is really a shift. Back in chapter 23, the focus there was on special days and holy day observances. Now we shift to every day or what we could call normal days and how God's people were to live out their role. You and I have probably heard and probably said that living for Jesus inside the walls of our church is easy, but living for Christ outside those walls, well, that's a far greater challenge. Well, that's exactly where we are here. Here's my question for you based upon chapter 24. The question is this, how does God expect me and you to live as his children when we are not at church? Get your Bible and join me. Leviticus, please, chapter 24. I talked about tracts here a moment ago. A gospel tract is what I'm talking about. That word is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This tract, as I said, is entitled Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. It's a tremendous tool when wanting to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ with a child. And by a child, I mean somebody that is, oh, a fifth grade on down. It ask these seven questions. Who is God? Who is Jesus? Where did we come from? Who is the devil? What is sin? What happens when people die? Can people go to heaven? And then here's a sample prayer. It's a great tool. Moms and dads, we are responsible to our children and our grandchildren to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ, to give them real answers to eternal questions. Here's a great tool just for that. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. If you take one of the methods, give us your name and mailing address. I'll send you not just this track, but a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Please let me do that. And if you cannot stay to the end of the program, just visit our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. 
If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 24, the opening four verses say this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil, olive oil, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually. Without the veil of testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening until the morning before the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. In case you didn't hear, that word continually is in there a lot. Now listen, chapter 24 of Leviticus has four very natural break points or or sections in it. I'm going to give a title to each one. I'm going to use a word beginning with the letter L, like in the word look. Now, each section has some lessons for us. So my title for each section is going to include the word lessons. Here are the four parts. Here are the titles. Are you ready? Verses one to four that we read, our title is Lessons from the Lamp. Lessons from the Lamp. The next section is verses five to nine. That section is Lessons from the Loaves, the Loaves of Bread in the Tabernacle. Then section three is verses 10 to 16. That's titled Lessons about the Lip. Uh, You were talking about the lip in your face, that thing you talk through there, your mouth, lessons uh, about the lip. And then lastly, verses 17 to 22, lessons on liability, lessons on liability. Now, we're going to look at these things one at a time, but today, let's just take the opening verses here, the lessons on the light from verses one to four. The light here, as I said, is the light in the tabernacle, the worship building for the Jews. This light is called the candlestick. It had seven lights sitting on one base. And if you're taking notes, jot down some words here, beginning with the letter S that kind of subdivide verses one to four. Let me give you those words. First of all, the word is source. The source of the oil for the lamp was the people themselves. They were to bring it. My second word is steadiness, steadiness. This light was to stay lit all night long. We know from Jewish culture that it was in the morning cleaned and then it was lit again. My third word is the word symbol. What in the world did this lamp symbolize? Well, frankly, there are two answers to this. There is a greater symbol answer and a lesser one. The greater symbol is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is the light of the world. There was only one light in the tabernacle, and there is only one light available to lead a person to Almighty God. Jesus is our mediator. He is the light by which we come to God. No man cometh to the Father but by me, Jesus said. Now, that's the major, the greater symbol here. But let me make a lesser symbolic application here. In some very real ways, the people, the Jewish people themselves, were also the light. As they were on their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land, they were in pagan territory. In spiritual terms, they were walking through a very dark place. Israel, the nation, was to be a light to those pagan nations, the Gentile nations. We see that they did have an impact on them. Do you remember the story of Rahab who lived in the city of Jericho? She'd heard of the God of the Jews. She'd heard of the power of God and the mercy of God that could be experienced. She'd learned that through the Jewish people as they walked through their journey. Rahab believed in their God. In the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 8, Jesus calls there his followers children of light. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 8, we are told that once we used to walk in darkness before we got saved, but now we are light in the Lord. So then we're told to walk as children of light. Then in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 15, we are told there that New Testament believers are walking through a world described as crooked and perverse. So what are we told to do? We are supposed to shine as lights in the world. 
That lamp in the tabernacle stayed lit because the people, as part of their offerings, brought oil, pure oil, beaten oil. This was a oil that was refined and the impurities had been removed. Tell me, listener friend, how is the gospel of our God in our day, in our own crooked and perverse era, how is our light going to shine? How is the gospel going to shine into the hearts and the lives of lost men and women and boys and girls? You and I know the answer to that. The light of the gospel will shine as we walk as children of light. It's going to shine as we let our light so shine before men in a dark day. Jesus said we are to let our light uh, so shine that people could see our good works and then glorify our heavenly Father. But our good works can only make a lost soul curious or thirsty, if you would. Our good works cannot communicate gospel truth. Telling the gospel verbally or sharing the gospel with a gospel tract is what makes the light of the gospel shine into the hearts, shine into the conscience of people who do not know Christ as Savior. Our good works cannot bring conviction. What they can do, as I said, they can stir a soul. They can make a soul thirsty for want to know why do we live this way and very few other people do. What makes us different? Well, when their curiosity is piqued, then we share with them the gospel light. So, what lessons do we take away from this lamp section, the opening four verses of Leviticus chapter 24? I have four different lessons written down here. Number one is this, there's only one true light which the world needs to see, and that's Jesus. There's only one true light the world needs to see, and that is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. That's lesson one. But lesson number two comes right on the heels of that. Lesson two is that true light will be seen through the light on the lives of the people of God. Let me say it again. The true light of Jesus Christ will be seen through our light and our lives as we live as the people of God. Lesson number three is this. The oil that is needed for this gospel light must be pure oil. Now, we know that oil in Scripture is used as a picture of the Holy Spirit here, but your life and my life needs to be pure. A good gospel witness given by a dirty lamp will not shine very bright. Here's lesson number four. This oil comes through the process of being beaten, or put it this way, it comes through the process of the trials of life. It's when our oil is purified and our light shines brightest, is when you and I go through trials, our oil is refined, and the brightness of the light of Christ in us shines more effectively. Dear friend, I want to help you shine for Christ with the gospel. Let me send you those gospel tracts, would you please? My announcer is about ready to come on and give you our mailing address and website and so on. Please, let me send you the free sample packet. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.